Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome to Spooktober. For those who aren't aware, Spooktober is a series of videos that will be premiering all throughout October, where Nightmarathon videos are compilations of stories I've told over the years. Spooktober videos consist of newly recorded stories that I narrated just for this month's festivities. Also, if you're into fiction, you can check out the Into the Night playlist, which is the third part of October's ongoing playlists. Into the Night is full of short stories and creepypastas that I've written in response to Inktober prompts over the years. You can find more information on all of that in the description box of any Into the Night video. You can also pre-order the first volume of the Into the Night anthology now by going to ravenreadshorror.com slash collections slash books. You can pre-order the book in digital, paperback, audiobook, and hardcover formats. Finally, on Halloween, after a mini-marathon of all kinds of stories from all three playlists, I will be releasing an audiobook that I haven't said anything about yet as a Halloween surprise for all of you. I hope you enjoy October's content and a happy spooky season to all. Without further ado, you know what time it is. It's time to get comfortable, grab a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. So, there's been running in my attic for about five years, maybe longer, I'm not sure. It happens every single night, and somehow, it's almost exactly 5 a.m. every time. My mom and I used to put it down to just a bird or a squirrel that got in through the window, but there's no way that an animal has been living in the attic for five years, without a trace, running around at 5 a.m. for a minute or two, and then disappearing. My mom and I hear the running in different formations. She hears it go in a big figure eight and then stop in the center. I hear it run in a figure of eight several times and then run off to the side, go down, go side to side and stop. I drew out the formation that I hear on paper and it was 81. I'm not sure if that holds any significance though. We both guessed the age of whatever's up there to be about six by the weight of the footsteps. It runs at about the speed that a child that age would. Slows down, stops, and then you don't hear it again until the next night. We plan to get our pastor involved to give us some advice, but whatever's up there, it doesn't seem like it needs holy intervention. It seems neutral. It seems tired. I don't know what we should do. We've never experienced anything like this before, but we know that there's something up there. I have sometimes heard sounds coming from the attic. We store random stuff there year round, and we only go up there about twice a year. The sound is like something heavy is being dragged or pushed across the floor. It lasts for around five seconds, and then it just stops. It's really random. I told my mom, and she said it might have just been snow falling from the roof, but it can't be because I've heard it in summer too. I haven't heard it in months, but it just came to my mind one day it also can't be bats or birds, because those creatures don't make the sounds that I hear. Our house is about 30 years old, I think. I have been living here my whole life, but my parents and older siblings moved here in 2004. All I know about it is that the people who lived here before us built the house, but I don't know anything else beyond that. My wife and I bought a house in the country. 
next to a Civil War battlefield in Northern Virginia. The original property was a 4,000 acre plantation that was subdivided into multiple smaller farms. The original plantation house of the 4,000 acre property was situated on our lot 15 yards behind the house with all of its stone foundation, chimney, and well. Our house was built in the mid 80s by hand by the previous owner who worked for NASA and IBM. He passed away after a battle with cancer. We fell in love with this house and property. You could tell it was the man's life's work. After purchasing the house for a great price, we walked the property with his widow and oldest adult son. They walked the entire property and house with us. But what I found odd is that both the widow and the son refused to enter the half unfinished downstairs basement adamantly. This became a long story with too many experiences to list. My wife and I over the course of five years and the friends and family that stayed the night with us all experienced poltergeist phenomena. From the TV changing itself to the NASA space station channel regularly showing up, the cabinet slamming, footsteps heard throughout the house, an out of body sound of somebody clear as day whistling for a dog. These things were heard regularly by everybody. Sometimes the whistling would be right over our shoulder, in our ear, almost like it was messing with us. Sometimes while you were in the shower, the same thing would happen, which was altogether unsettling. One time in the basement alone, I was painting the ceiling on a ladder. I heard the double whistle right in my ear, over my shoulder, so loudly and clearly that I jumped off the ladder. I backed myself up against the wall to see what was coming. I was so freaked out that I actually ran out the back door to the backyard and I went around the house to get back upstairs instead of running through the basement to get to the stairs. I'm not easily shaken by any means, but that was too much. My dog would always stare and bark at the top corner of the family room. He refused to go downstairs. I would pick him up and physically carry him downstairs only to have him sprint right back up and bark at us from the top of the stairs until we came back up. My wife has had a hand brush across the back of her neck multiple times. Sinks, lights turning on by themselves right in front of us, keys and other important small items would go missing, never to be found again, no matter how hard we searched every inch of the house. I would wake up at about 4.30 a.m. to go to work and I would regularly find the same two doors leading out back toward the old plantation house, wide open with bugs and mosquitoes flying in for Lord knows how long. Maybe all night after we made sure to lock them, we don't know. My mother-in-law was awoken one night by a man's voice asking her, who are you? While living in a haunted house, you really have no choice but to ignore the activity. We got used to it, and it would come and go in cycles. We never felt a bad presence or saw any apparitions. We always figured it was the old owner and would always joke to each other, well, there goes Mr. Copper. But one day, I was home alone, laying on the couch in broad daylight after a long day of work. I heard a bang so loud that it actually shook the entire 3,000 square foot home. It sounded like it came from our large attic. I immediately jumped up and thought one of the large oak trees around the house had crashed through the roof. I sprinted outside to assess the damage, but the roof was completely fine, no downed trees. My second thought was our AC unit, which is in the attic, may have just fallen off its pedestals and crashed through the ceiling. I grabbed a flashlight and scoured the entire attic to find nothing wrong, definitely no earthquake in the area, and no other neighbors felt anything. It seems like the activity in the house has picked up 10 times in the last month while we're there getting ready for it to be sold. It's been two years since we moved and we've had no activity since, but not a day goes by where I don't think about the strange activity in the house. And I always wonder 
what shook everything from the attic. When I was a kid, I would come home from school almost every single day to the attic door being unlocked. I would ask my mom about it and she would just look at me like I was crazy. The house had full-sized attic doors on the second floor. I would lock the one in the bathroom every single day when I got home. Eventually, after my mom said that she wasn't doing it, I just stopped worrying about it because it freaked me out so much. But I also used to hear what sounded like footsteps in the overhead attic when I would try to go to sleep. I ignored this as well for the same reasons. I was the only one who lived on the second floor from grades 3 to 12. I started noticing it at about grade 7. And at about grade 10, I stopped checking on it. We never did find an explanation for who or what was constantly unlocking that attic door. Three years ago, my wife and I moved into a house. It was built in the 80s, but it was in great shape and it didn't cost much. We were excited for such a great deal. We bought it and started renovation on it, which lasted about a year. We moved in and for the first month or so, it was great. Well, one night while my wife was at work, I was laying in bed when I heard a little pitter patter. It was coming from the attic and the door was located directly over my bed. I panicked, being a believer in ghosts and stuff, and I ran to the living room and slept there. The next morning, I told my wife about it, who brushed it off as raccoons or something. She bought some traps and put them up there before going to bed. There were no pitters that night, and in the morning, there were no animals in the trap. She reset them and we left for the day. We got back late and went to bed. The next morning, she found a squirrel in one of the traps. Problem solved. She let it out and we both forgot about it. Well, two months ago, it started up again. Every single night this time. It sounds like something small, running back and forth across the floor of the attic. Every time it happens, I wake my wife, who's a very deep sleeper. But it always stops the second she wakes up. She's never heard them and thinks that I'm either crazy or that it's animals again. We've put more traps and she's gone up there and found nothing at all. My sister recently adopted a little girl and when she runs, it sounds exactly like the noises I hear. I'm convinced that there's a little kid ghost up in the attic. I've told my wife this and she's told me that it's nothing and to just forget it, but I can't. I heard it last night, and I know that I will hear it tonight as well. I know that this story is going to sound like not much, nothing too crazy. But when you experience these things, it's still pretty creepy. There was this one time when I went to bed and I was about to fall asleep and I would hear these loud noises from the attic. It sounded like a box was pushed over and small balls were rolling all over the floor of the attic, almost like marbles. It happened once and at first I thought, well, maybe something fell down, right? But the weird thing is, it would repeat several times within minutes, and it would always sound the exact same. It was like these sounds were on a loop. And then I would start to hear it often. The same loop of the same sounds. I have not yet found an explanation for it. At first I thought maybe it was snow on the roof, 
because that could have caused the sound of something rushing or falling down the roof. But it wasn't snow, and it happened when there wasn't even snow to fall down. Just the same box being pushed over and small balls rolling around, over and over on a loop. I have no explanation. This just might be one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. My family and I just moved into a little house. Nothing too fancy. We'd only been living there for a few weeks when paranormal things started happening as soon as we entered the attic. It was like when we went in there, we disturbed some demon or spirit. Everyone who's gone up there has had a really bad feeling about it. At first, I was the only one who realized what was happening. I remember laying in bed. Everything was silent as a stone, and I was just peacefully watching TV. That's when I heard whispering in my closet, which was right in front of me. As I laid there, just paralyzed, I remember thinking to myself that I could get up, slowly, and check. Keep in mind, I was only seven or eight at the time. As I sat there negotiating with myself, I finally persuaded myself to go check. It sounded like at least five people whispering, but as I opened the closet door, nobody was there. The only thing was, all my clothes were swaying back and forth. It couldn't have been wind because the window wasn't open, and I hadn't opened the door fast enough to cause any wind. I repeated it again just to make sure. This went on every single night for about two weeks, and then my family started to catch on. My grandma had been staying at the house visiting and had to sleep in my room with the dog. The next morning, my grandma tells me that my dog was growling at the closet all night long and that something evil was in there. After that, the whispers stopped but the weird noises, the things being out of place, that never quit. After a while, we just got used to it, but that's when things got worse. This one night, I had taken a shower and gone to bed as usual. No whispers, just straight to sleep. The next morning, I woke up with three scratches down my stomach. I thought it was the dog, but this is the weird part. My mom and grandma both described them as it looked as if something had gone inside me and scratched me from the inside out. At seven or eight years old, I got a little freaked out by that. After that occurred, we blessed the house, but the things never really stopped. My mom and I rode our bikes to the store, and when we got back, we saw a little girl standing in our backyard. So we searched for her, but we found nothing. Our yard was fenced in. It would have been nearly impossible for her to get in there anyway. After that occurred, things stopped. I mean, we would occasionally get a few things here or there, but nothing too serious. A few years passed, and eventually we moved out. But we still don't know what we might have released from the attic. This is the second time that I've come home and the attic door has been wide open in the dark. My fiance and I live alone. The first time that it happened was while she was at work. I got home from work earlier and went upstairs to change and the attic door was wide open. I had dropped her off at work, so she hadn't been home. She had no way of getting home. The same thing happened last night. I had friends over and we went upstairs and the attic door was wide open again in the dark room when nobody had been inside of it. The thing is, the attic door can only open if you turn the knob. My friend went to the bathroom before coming upstairs and he said that he heard something above the ceiling. 
We told him the door was wide open to the attic, and all of us were pretty quiet for a second. I got the chills and shut the door. Any ideas? I've been reading a lot of people's posts and missing the spirit world a bit, so I thought I'd tell you my ghostly experience from my childhood home. When I was 10, my parents moved the family into a house that was about 80 to 90 years old. The house was built in the 1920s. As a teenager, when I was home alone, I would hear footsteps walking around downstairs at night. I would always hear the faint sound of that 1920s to 1930s party music. Honestly, it was kind of calming to me. I would see people out of the corner of my eyes when walking around, and I always felt like somebody else was there. However, it wasn't a malicious feeling. Except one time, but that's another story for another day. My parents ended up living in this house for about 20 years. I moved out about six years ago. This story, though, happened in 2015. I was in the attic with my boyfriend, now husband. It was a big walk-in attic. It's the shape of a square, with the chimney going right through the middle. The stairs are broken up by a landing. I was on the west side of the attic with my husband behind the chimney, meaning there was no way that the shadow was caused by either of us. We were looking for some wrapping paper for the Mother's Day presents we had gotten our moms. All of a sudden, I hear something walking up the stairs. I thought it was the dog since we left the door open. So I look over and I see the full shadow of a human being on the wall of the stair landing. I'm just standing in awe that whoever this is just showed themselves to me. And I tapped my husband to see if he saw it too. He did. And right after he did, it disappeared. I never saw it again, but I always felt and knew that it was there. I'm thinking that this ghost might have decided to show themselves to us since we were moving out right after this happened. Maybe as a little goodbye. I haven't experienced much paranormal activity since I moved across the country. And honestly, I really miss ghosts and the comfort that they brought me. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your day. And you can make of this story what you want. I've lived in this house for over three years, and things have happened the entire time. We've considered animals or even a squatter, but we've never found any evidence of either. The attic access is so small and out of the way that realistically only a child could fit. It's a really small tile in the top of a closet. The attached neighbors are pretty quiet. Unless the kids, who sound like a herd of buffalo, are there, but we're accustomed to that. It began with footsteps above the living room. Of course, we brushed it off as the house settling initially. As we heard it more, we noticed that the steps are clear, and you can hear which direction it's moving. A former roommate was in the bedroom with the access, and she said that her closet doors would shake at night sometimes. We had one cat at that point, and he slept with me. As an old man, he wasn't very into mischief. At some point, she checked the tile, and it was moved partially off the opening. Since it wasn't anything malicious, we just accepted that it was probably here before us and left it alone. This was normal for a long time, with random periods of dormancy. Eventually, she moved out and my fiance moved in. We took over the larger bedroom and never noticed the closet shaking that she mentioned. But we have had a bunch of stuff in the top of the closet, so the tile isn't really visible to keep an eye on it. It was still more of the same until early last year. 
My vape had the removable batteries to put on the big charger. I figured they were done charging, so I went to grab them, and boom, they're gone. I asked my fiancé if he had moved them, and he denied it. So we searched the entire bedroom, and suddenly we find one under my nighttime water jug. The other was still MIA, so he said, Okay, you got us. Please give it back now. Mostly as a joke. We gave up, but later it was on the nightstand in plain view. This was the start of things disappearing and reappearing. The most prominent and most witnessed was a few months ago with his phone. Both of us and our roommate all searched the entire house. All the rooms, inside and under the furniture, even the fridge. Suddenly, later, it was laying perfectly on the bed, away from the blankets. There's no way it was missed, because all three of us were in the room. All the blankets were taken off and shaken. I was even laying on the bed to check beside it. After that, though, things changed. We started hearing things down here in the rest of the house, and it feels different. Before things happen, I get that heavy feeling in my gut. One night, everyone else was at work, and I felt it. I tried to tell myself that everything was fine, and that I was overreacting, when I heard footsteps in the kitchen. But then, I felt a piece of my hair move. There was no airflow, because it was pretty chilly, but not enough for the heat to be on. So I got out of there and went to stand outside until somebody came home. Another night we were sleeping and I distinctly heard a man's voice in the living room. Our roommate was gone for the night and the TVs were off. I could clearly hear it coming from that direction. It sounded just like if a show was kind of loud in another room. I sent my fiance to look and he confirmed that no one was there and the house was still locked up. This energy makes me so uncomfortable, and I still question if this is the same thing or not. A couple of our friends stay over occasionally because they live at home and want to escape. One of our friends said that she's also had some things happen, last night specifically. On a past visit, she said that she was changing in the bathroom, and it sounded like somebody slammed their fist on the door. My cat sometimes likes to body check the door if he's not invited in, but he was knocked out on my lap. They sleep on the couch, and at night, she'll also hear stuff in the kitchen, before I even mentioned what had happened to me. Last night, she woke up to what sounded like somebody holding onto the couch and jumping, like a kid would. My cat was sitting at her feet, and started staring at the spot, and then ran away like he was scared. She tried to go back to sleep, but it felt like something was playing with her hair, and she said it was really cold. It was in no way cold last night, and we don't have a heat pump, so it's pretty warm this time of year. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm really not a huge fan of the new things that are happening. The ghost in the attic always seemed friendly, like a child, mischievous at worst, but this... This just feels different. So I've never been one to say that I believe in ghosts, but there's something here. My boyfriend and I bought a house last year an old home, almost 100 years old, with a half-finished attic. The attic has this energy. I love it. It draws me in, and also our cat. Our cat would live in this 100-degree attic if we let him. The dog is terrified. Won't even go up there if I'm carrying him. And he'll freak out and run away if I try. My boyfriend is also scared of it. He says he hears a lot of noises, footsteps. The door up there slams shut and opens with all the windows being closed. He said he'll wake up in the middle of the night terrified of what he hears up there. I could sit up there for hours. The energy just feels 
I guess strong and powerful, but I don't really feel in danger. I feel comfortable, but he feels terrified. The cat loves it. The dog hates it. I'm not really into this stuff because I've never really believed in it before. But I'm trying to understand what's happening here. How could the same thing provoke two different results? It's so interesting. So I moved into this house and I've been here for about a year now, but about a month ago, weird things started happening. Like I said, my family and I moved into this house a year ago after we had worked on it for about five months. After we finished, we moved into the basically new house. We had torn everything up, replaced cabinets, and even gotten new plumbing installed. After we moved in, it was a relief we had finally gotten out of the moving process. We invite all of our family over for Christmas, one aunt and one grandma. But after Christmas passed, my aunt would frequently ask us how the house was doing, how we were doing, and how our dog was doing. We didn't really find this odd at first. I mean, she's family, and we just moved. So we just figured she was curious as to how we were all doing. But then, I started hearing the footsteps in the attic. Soft, but definitely noticeable. Since I have a tree that's taller than the house, right outside the window, I just thought it was that. After a while, I got annoyed, and I wondered if it was just really windy at night here. I go outside to see how windy it is. Not even a breeze. So then I look into the attic with a flashlight to see if my mom was up there doing something, but nobody was there. I didn't see anybody. But what I did see was a set of footprints in the dust of the attic floor. And the floor was still creaking as I was up there. I was confused and wondering if maybe the house was just shifting. I went up to where I could see the footprints more clearly. I was just super confused. They were bigger footprints than mine. I'm a 12 in men's. So I go back into my room and the footsteps are still going back and forth, back and forth. I fall asleep after a while, but I never forget it. Fast forward about three weeks of this happening. I finally talked to my mother about it. She went up and looked with me and the footprints were still in the dust. Moved to yesterday. I was talking to my aunt and I told her about it. She asked if anything else had happened and I said no. She's very religious for context. She asks if the footprints were bigger than mine and I said yes. She asks if they happened over my room every night and I said yes. Then she asks if I've put salt in the surrounding area of the attic to prevent whatever was causing all the noise and I say no. She says, be not afraid, and hangs up. Convinced that my aunt cursed me or something, I guess I'm telling my story to figure out what could have happened. Either she perceived something early on and just didn't want to scare us, or she did something. I'm leaning toward the former, but I just don't know what is happening up there. For context, I live in a top floor apartment where the attics are segmented, meaning that we can't access anyone else's attic apart from our own. I've been having this issue for around a year and a half now. At random intervals each day, I'll hear this scurrying or a scratching type sound seemingly coming from directly above me. For the most part, I chalked it up to rats or birds that somehow had gotten caught in the attic. But I've been questioning this. My family has also heard the sounds, so it's not just me. Last year, I decided to take a ladder and look into the attic. 
keep in mind that the roof is quite low, and I also don't trust myself actually standing up there, as the ceiling is thin and I would probably just fall through. I shined a flashlight to look around. Nothing apart from some old chairs, a baby walker that I had as a kid, and just plain old insulation. No birds, no rats, living or dead to speak of. I shrugged it off and went on with my life, still hearing the noises like usual. I feel a little unnerved though. The noises are usually quite quick, but sometimes they can linger. Then, what actually brought on me wanting to tell my story is what happened just now. I'm sitting around and I hear a thud coming from above me. I panic and I ask my mom if she heard it too, and she confirmed that she also heard it and thought it was me. I get the ladder and the flashlight once more, and I look up, this time with more intent, as I move some insulation and other junk out of the way, but nothing. So the question is, am I jumping to conclusions? Is it a ghost? Is there something that could explain both scurrying and a thud with no evidence left behind? I'm starting to get a little worried. This happened years ago, when I was about 11, so I don't have any pictures of it, but my mom and I remember it very clearly. The house that we lived in at the time was built in the 1930s. It was a three-floor house, but it was all separated into five apartments. My dad and I lived in the rear apartment, and my mom lived in the attic apartment, because my parents had split up. I was in my mom's apartment with her while she was working on something. I was lying in her bed on my phone, and eventually I just zoned out, looking at the wall. It was about 11 p.m., and she and I decided to walk to the gas station to get some snacks. The only way to get into the apartment was through the outside door into the apartment or through the fire escape. When we got back, the door and window were both locked we always checked, so nobody had gotten in while we were gone. But when we got back, I went into where her bed was and sat down to eat. I picked up my phone, and then I just looked over at the wall that I had been looking at before. I saw my name scratched into it. Then I noticed that below my name was my father's name and then my mom's name was halfway carved below my father's. It was really messy, but it was legible. We have no explanation for this, and we have since moved out of that house. We're pretty sure that it was paranormal, and my mom and I are still completely curious about what happened there. I'm pretty sure that something is in the attic, and it wants to make its way to my room. I'm a teenager who's been living under my stepdad's roof for a while. He had a wife before that died in the house, and now I don't think she likes me. Let me start from the beginning. I was making some food because my mom and my stepdad were both not home. It was just some ramen that I was putting in the microwave for dinner. Once the microwave was done cooking, I walked over to it, but a pan fell on my head. Now I know most people would say, well, it was probably not on there right, but this was different. All of the pans were on the wall, that's where the hanger is, which means this pan had to have been thrown at me in order to hit me in the head. Another time was about a month after this. It was midnight and I had just gotten to sleep. But then, out of nowhere, I hear a creak in the floorboards of the attic. Now I've seen some horror movies, and in those movies, if you hear something, then you shouldn't go up there. So, I stayed in bed, hoping that it would go away. And it did, eventually. 
But then what I heard in my closet made me terrified. I heard groans from inside of it. After a few more moments, it stopped, but then the creak in the floorboard started up again. It was just back and forth, back and forth, moaning. Stop, creak, stop, moan again. It went on like this all night. I had no idea what to do, so I tried falling back asleep, and I guess at some point I did. The next morning, though, there was a pepper on the TV stand. Now this requires a bit of a second story because my family has a history with peppers. The pepper story started when our late great-great-grandfather was still a kid. He had a mom that died a year after he turned 17. His mom loved to cook and stuff like that. But one night, a pepper appeared on his bed. He asked his dad about it, but his dad didn't know anything. Eventually, the day ended causing him to go back to bed. When he woke up, there were more peppers, almost everywhere in his room. But after they cleaned them all up, weird things started to happen. Things began to fly across the rooms without any explanation. Pans would as well. Stuff like that. They moved out after that. When he had children, the same thing happened to them. And when they had children, it kept happening. After generations and generations, we've always figured that for us in our family, for some reason, randomly appearing peppers are most likely a demonic thing. Anyway, I was freaking out and screaming all around because I found this pepper. My parents were out of town, so what was I gonna do? Call the police and tell them there was a pepper in my room? I had to wait it out for a week with the same thing happening over and over. The weird part was, my brother was home with me, but it was only happening to me. And it wasn't my brother. I vetted that pretty thoroughly. I've had countless sleep paralysis episodes since then too, almost every night. I don't know what's going on, but I need help. So my mom and I moved into a house when I was in the fifth grade. For the record, I'm 25 now. There was this room in the attic that looked like it was actually built to be a part of the house and not some makeshift DIY room. The attic was also not your typical attic with a pull down door. Instead, it had a walkthrough door. The layout was in an L shape. It was all wooden and the room was obvious at the end of the L. We used the attic for Christmas decorations and whatnot, but I was always really curious about that room. So I turned the room into my little hangout area. It was kind of awkward, so we couldn't really figure anything else to use it for. The only thing in there when we moved in was a wooden table with four chairs and then some weird bench. I swear it was a bed, but it didn't look big enough. My friends and I would always go in there to hang out and play games and whatnot. Well, one day I accidentally broke the table. I was really worried that my mom was going to be mad at me. I don't think she would have cared in hindsight since the stuff was so old, but still. Out of fear, I just grabbed all the stuff I owned and I left the room closing the door behind me. I think I remember once going back in there a few years later, like ninth grade, but I never really spent any extended period of time in there after that. I would always go into the attic though to stack the Christmas decorations in front of the wall and the door to this room. I just didn't go into the room itself. The year before we moved, we decided to move everything into the garage after Christmas. It was my senior year of high school, and that way we wouldn't have to deal with it when the movers showed up. We never used the garage anyway, and we had gotten rid of lots of stuff the year prior, so there was a lot of room in there. Anyway, that was the last official time that I ever saw the door. The absolute last time that I stepped foot in the house, 
the stuff was all packed away, on the truck preparing to leave. I was doing one last walk through, just for old time's sake, when I decided to go into that room just to make sure that I hadn't left anything there. I went to the attic, and it was missing. Not the attic, but the door. The room. It was nothing but a blank wall. Like, there was no way a room could have ever been there. I was shocked and I asked my mom why they had decided to wall it in. But she said she had no idea about it. In fact, she has no memory of this room at all. I called my friends to verify that they remembered the room, and they did. They remembered all the good times we had there. But she didn't. It was really odd. I've never felt anything weird about the room at all either, and I'm pretty sensitive to paranormal stuff. This just seemed like a random room to me. But then, it just disappeared. And honestly, I still don't know what to make of it. When I was a kid, I lived in a one-story house that had a very small space that you could consider an attic. We didn't keep anything up there because it was just so small. I don't even know where the entrance to it was, if there was one. But, and this started right as we moved in, after we would go to bed, I'd start hearing footsteps up there. I knew they were footsteps because they would move in a rhythm and move from one end of the house to the other. I lived in that house with my grandparents from when I was 8 to 12 years old, and this happened every night. I repeatedly tried telling my grandparents about this, but they always said that it was just the house settling. I was never able to sleep well as a kid, so while my grandparents would be asleep as soon as 8 p.m. struck, I would be laying awake in bed, staring at the ceiling. It was always the most terrifying when the footsteps stopped right above me, like right over my bed. And then within a few seconds to minutes, they'd walk back to some other location up there. Nobody ever believed me that this was happening. My granddad had even found holes that had apparently been drilled in several of the walls, one in the bathroom, and he wrote it off as a previous owner running cables I lived in that house for four years, and I was convinced that somebody was living in the ceiling above us and would become active when they thought we had gone to bed. I will never forget that. It always happened at the same time of the night, too, right after we all went to bed. This was back in the late 90s and early 2000s, so I don't know if there could have been cameras or something that they could have been watching us on but they definitely knew when we went to sleep. To this day, I'm still convinced that somebody was living up there. Is it paranormal? I don't know. One of the previous owner's kids did die in the house, and they had a wolf-dog hybrid as a pet that had mauled him in the living room. So, who knows? Maybe it was paranormal. But I know footsteps from houses settling. And I know that someone whether living or dead, was up in that crawl space. So my husband and I have been living in this house for 10 months now, and I don't believe this house has anything wrong with it. The previous owners seemed to be of the lazy sort. The house seems fine, but for some odd reason, every so often, the back garage door will find itself flung open, even though it's locked. Given the state of the property when we found it, we thought they just didn't do basic maintenance, and we figured it was something we could fix. When the lock was intact, we were truly freaked out because we thought somebody had broken into our house. But upon further inspection, nothing was missing from the garage, 
and the door leading into the house was still locked and intact. Hmm. So over the course of time, this would happen several more times, nothing being tampered with that we could see, and no one being found. But ever since tonight, I've been on high alert and kind of paranoid. I recently had major surgery, so I had some specific pain meds prescribed to me, which sit beside my bed on a table. I had about 10 left, and I hadn't been taking them the past couple of days. I wanted to get off of them as soon as possible. My husband was about to give me one for pain that night, though, but looked at me and asked me if I had been taking them, because there were only two left. Today, the back garage door was open again. Now, there's a panel to the attic in my garage, and one outside my bedroom. Every time we inspect the back garage door after finding it open, it is always still locked, which you can only do from the inside, of course. We literally body check the doors to make sure that it catches and that the wind isn't the culprit behind it flying open. I honestly never find anything out of place, but then again, I haven't really been paying attention to things like that since I didn't really have a real reason to suspect anything was tampered with before. It's just my husband and I, and I know he didn't take my meds. I've always joked with my husband that somebody could be up there, since we watch a lot of crazy shows about things like that. But now I don't know if I'm being paranoid or if that's a legitimate possibility. We probably would have thought it was potentially something paranormal, but the medication going missing? I mean, what ghost needs pain meds? And how is that garage door still coming open? When I was in about the third grade, I went into my school's attic. My school was inside of my church. The attic was, and still is, very huge and dark. I went up there with some friends and my brother during summer break, because my mom worked there and it was a work day. Anyway, we went up there and found a grenade or two while seeing creepy angel statues and junk. We were just milling about when we started to hear things and then we decided that we should get out of there. I don't know if the church is haunted or not, but something was just off in that attic, especially with the statues. As soon as we noticed them, everything just started feeling weird, and we started hearing these strange noises that we couldn't pinpoint. I know it sounds cliche, but I do see and hear things while walking in dark places, alone. As a religious person, I believe that anything is either angels or demons. But I still don't know which one was up there. In 2007, I moved into the house that I currently live in. It's well over 100 years old, and ever since I can remember, there have been weird or creepy things that occur. Recently, I've heard noises late at night while I'm in bed. I sleep on the top floor of my house. Another thing is that in the hallway, we have an attic door that's bolted shut. It hasn't been opened by our family or my neighbors who used to live here, from what I've been told. I decided to ask my father about it, and he told me that it really isn't a full-sized attic. It's more of a crawl space, which goes right over my room. So why have I been hearing noises above me late at night? The part that creeps me out the most is that we've never had animals, beside the occasional mouse that gets in, which makes me think that what I'm hearing is not an animal. It really doesn't sound like any kind of animal I've ever heard scurrying around in an attic or outside. It seems almost human, but I don't know.
I live in England in a two-story flat. I've always believed in the paranormal, but my dad doesn't believe in any type of ghost or anything paranormal. I never thought that this flat was haunted originally. However, as I got older, I started to feel uncomfortable by myself. I started to see shadows downstairs out of the corner of my eye. Now, there's an attic directly above our second floor, but there's no way for us to enter it, as you don't have any access from this flat. The only way to access this attic is by having a specific key that can open the attic. It's Council Flats, which is above all my neighbor's house. However, the attic above my flat is the only one which is blocked off, and there's no way to enter it. I have the last flat on the end of these 18 council flats. There are no neighbors above us, just the attic, which no one can access without that key, and they would still not be able to get above our flat. One night, about two years ago, all of the family was in bed, and it was about three o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, I heard something crash above me. It was so loud that it woke up the entire family, and we all got up and just stood on the landing together. After that bang, we heard three loud footsteps and the sound of something being dragged behind those footsteps. It was so scary, especially knowing that nobody could physically be up there. It's physically impossible. My dad was not convinced that it was a ghost. He thought that somebody, somehow, had gotten up into the attic. So he went outside to check if the communal attic door was opened. I followed him outside and it was completely padlocked shut with heavy chains all around the lock. I tried to explain my logic to him. How could anyone be up in our part of the attic when it's blocked off and literally impossible to get to? We came back into the house and we were all quite shaken up. My brother was quite young and was able to get back to sleep, but I was awake all night and found it very difficult to sleep. After this experience, I started to smell old cigarettes every time I would enter the bathroom. It smelled so old. After that event, my brother and my mom and I were going away on holiday whilst my dad had to stay here and work. He told me that he slept with his headphones on every night, as even he felt uncomfortable by himself. As a family, we still have no idea what those noises were, and since then we've continued to hear strange noises from the impossible to reach attic. This story is short and sweet, but I still wanted to share this experience. We're renting a house that was built in 1925. This house has had minimal activity, and my husband, a skeptic, is the one who's experienced the most. Shadows, lights turning off, and actually hearing the physical switch click. Strange noises, stuff like that. On Friday, as we were laying down for bed, I heard the sound of a child running from one side of the attic bedroom to the other. We have no children, but I have younger siblings and I remember that sound well. I know what it sounds like when little kids run through a house. When I heard it, I turned to my husband and he just nodded, looking at the ceiling, and then continued to harass me when I couldn't go to sleep. If we had lived in an apartment, I could have easily rationalized the noise. It was a similar level of sound. But we live in a house, completely by ourselves. It went on for about 10 minutes, and finally I fell asleep. I woke up at 3 a.m. for work, and there was no sound at all. It's definitely creepy.
I was probably about 12 or 13, and my buddy was spending the night at my house. Like typical kids, we were up late, horsing around and drinking soda. I had curtains up in my room, and they used those old curtain rods that came apart and looked like swords. Being typical kids, we looked at each other, both grabbed one and yelled, On guard! We're right in the middle of our sword fight, and right above our heads, we start to hear creaking, as if somebody was rocking in a rocking chair. Keep in mind it was like 2 a.m., so everyone else was asleep. My house was an old house that was built around the 40s or 50s. I forget exactly which, but it was old. So I chalked it up to the house being old and settling. A few minutes later, we heard it again, right above our heads. A slow, rocking back and forth type of creaking. We both lowered our swords and looked at each other with a, what was that, look on our face. I said, you heard that, right? And he said, no kidding, I heard that, what was that? I don't know, I said. But being young and fearless, I said, let's go have a look. We go to the attic door and slowly open it. I go up first, being as it was my house and I know the layout. I get to the top of the steps and look down to where the sound had come from. There was nothing of the rocking sorts, just stacks of dusty boxes. We go down to that end of the attic, just to make sure there wasn't like a rocking horse or something in the corner. But there was nothing that rocks. We just stood there with that spooked and confused look. I said, I don't know, dude, but let's get out of here. I'm getting a creepy vibe. As we started to walk away, we heard the wood floor creak behind us. But this time, it wasn't a rocking. It just sounded as though somebody had stepped out from behind the boxes. At this time, my buddy, who was now positioned in front of me, got spooked and bolted down the steps. I, on the other hand, was frozen in fear. I could feel someone standing behind me, and the back of me was chilled from head to toe. I didn't want to turn around, but I had to see if something was there. I slowly turned, and about four feet away there was a shadowy figure, standing at about the same height as me, with a human-like shape and it was darker than the darkness itself. I yelled out an expletive and proceeded to run for the door, only to slip on the second step and slide the rest of the way down on my butt. I don't know if the shadow did that or my hysterics, but either way, it was totally freaky. The next day we told my parents. They replied with laughter and said that maybe it was Granny. Apparently one of my parents' grandparents had passed in the house and never fully left. How true that is, I don't know. All I do know is that that thing scared me so badly, I never stepped foot in the attic again. That was only my first encounter with this figure, though. But that's a story for another day. For a brief time in my childhood, we lived in a redone train station in the middle of nowhere, New Hampshire. Small little town with like 400 people, but still a few things to do, and a decent amount of wealth. So the bottom floor of this building is a super popular local sub and pizza shop, and we lived right over them. I was like nine at the time, and my bedroom had a very old decrepit door cliche, I know, but it really was like rotted wood. That door led to stairs which led to the attic. The whole attic was pretty decrepit, honestly. It was like they had never redone that part of the house. Old, creaky, weird smells, all of it. I got terrible vibes from that attic. I was terrified to be in my room alone. I was nine, so I could have just been paranoid because I was interested in paranormal things at the time. 
but we lived there for a year. And I heard voices of people I knew, knocks on the door from the attic side, and the door would frequently slam itself open. I eventually asked my mom to install a heavy lock on it because it scared me so badly. We got the padlock and nothing crazy happened, but it was the same kind that you would put on a school locker. Now that I had that, the door would just shake and shake like somebody was stuck in there trying desperately to get out. That continued for a few months with no escalation, just this door that seemed to be alive. Our kitty had found a way to sneak up to the attic and back through a rotted part of the door. And one day, we hadn't seen her for a while. We checked up there, and we found my cat dead in the corner of the attic. We thought maybe it was rat poison that we didn't know was up there, but the vet never found any poison in her system. The vet wrote it off as old age, but she was only five. I guess it's possible, and my mom just didn't want to spend more money trying to find out why it died, but it was still really traumatic. Things just got worse after that night. I started to hear my mom up there, a lot, and I would just assume that she was up there cleaning or something. She would just say pretty normal things, like somebody would if they were talking to themselves, and it was definitely her voice. Sometimes she would ask me stuff, like if I wanted anything at the store, or what I felt like for dinner, if I was going anywhere this weekend, the things she asked me pretty regularly. It was loud and clear, not different from her normal speech at all. So I would always answer the questions, but then I wouldn't get any reply. So I'd go up there, and I would see that she wasn't up there. And a lot of the time, I would find out that she wasn't even home. Eventually, I stopped checking to see if she was up there, and I stopped replying, too. My mom heard it herself twice. She was cleaning my room, and she said she heard somebody in the attic. And the first time, she assumed that it was just somebody down in the pizza shop, and that the sound had carried. But the second time, my mom heard herself call my name, and then say, I'm back from the store, come help put the stuff away. My mom got scared and finally believed me. It was like a recording of her talking. After we became more aware of it, it just stopped. But there was one more time that we felt it. My mom was cleaning my room, and I heard her yell, no. Then she had a seizure. I called my friend, who called medical support and the cops. I moved out soon after. It was still the weirdest and really the only undeniable paranormal experience that I've ever had to this day. I just moved into my house in the mobile area. It's a two-story house with a huge attic. It's not big enough to stand up in, but you can get on your knees up there. To give you some insight, the entrance to the attic is in my bathroom. I have been hearing footsteps up there every morning, even when nobody is home. I have also heard voices in my bathroom, but every time I check to see who it is, nobody's there. The weird thing is that when I went into my mom's room, she said, I'm glad you're staying in here today because yesterday morning I heard this huge boom in the attic. I'm scared to go up there and actually investigate. I lifted the door and I saw a flashlight and face cream, but they're not ours. I also saw what looked like a light at the very end of the attic. I don't know what I should do. At first I thought all this was paranormal or something, but now I'm confused. Maybe somebody's living up there. The worst part is that the attic has an exit that goes directly outside. So, I'm leaning towards something or someone being in our attic. The thought of it being someone scares me even more.